Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and today we're going to be looking at a submarine that apparently went missing in the last day, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a submarine, it's a situation that's happening live as we speak, a situation where a few people have been trapped so far underwater uh, to the depths of the Titanic ruins, where uh, they unfortunately don't actually have any ability to contact anybody because they're so far near the uh, bottom of the ocean. And uh, it's to a point where the oxygen supply on their hull is obviously dwindling out. It's a really, really scary situation. And it's one that's left me completely interested into the how it's happened. So let's get started with exactly where we begin here. Now, if you follow the United States Coast Guard, you probably have seen the press release for the establishment of the Unified Command for the 21-foot submersible Titan 900 miles east of Cape Cod. So yeah, this is a rescue mission going on for a submarine where the Canadians and the Americans are working together to make sure a couple billionaires and rich people are safe from a absolutely stupid trek into the bottom of the ocean that they took. Now, where was this trek to? Obviously, the Titanic. I don't think I have to describe the Titanic on my channel. It's a pretty famous story of a ship that absolutely sunk to the bottom of the ocean. Uh, one of the big failures, I guess you could say, of, uh, of nautical exploration. But ladies and gentlemen, if you wanted to learn about the Titanic, Google is a great resource for you. So, of course, the U.S. Coast Guard put this information out there, said the Canadian Coast Guard, bunch of assets are en route to to help save the people at the bottom of the ocean right now. You can even see they got like search patterns over here. Again, I'm not a Coast Guard expert. This is the pattern they believe is, is fit for, uh, for exploration and recovery. And I'm gonna believe what the US Coast Guard says. They're professionals when it comes to this stuff. Now the cause of this was a private company known as Ocean Gate Expeditions. Now, Ocean Gate Expeditions is a website that I really can't explore anymore right now. Like, trying to enter it is just literally, it's not even an accessible website. So thank God for uh, things like the Wayback Machine, where we can actually see what they're about. Join the Titanic Expedition. Explore the world's most famous shipwreck. Limited space available. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, it's, it's probably a super expensive trip. 95% of the Earth's ocean is unexplored. You can change that. That's actually a true statement. We actually don't know much about the seas, the depths of the sea, just like we don't know much about the stars. It's a wild world that we get into. See, going into the bottom of the ocean requires us to have vessels that can withstand the immense pressure of water at that depth, okay? It's not entirely easy. If you don't have a submarine capable of that, your submarine collapses in of itself and you die very, very, very quickly, very painfully, I would say. So expedition highlights over here, they've got, you know, people going down, recording with their iPhones, uh, upcoming expeditions, so the Azores expedition where they explore hydrothermal vents. Awesome, three days. And of course, they've even got that classic feedback, Ocean Gate expeditions make you feel like a full member of the crew, and the experience allows you to participate in every aspect of the expedition. Okay, that's great. Now, Stockton Rush, who I believe is also on the entire uh, tour as well, uh, at the moment he's also missing on his own ship. This person believes in their product so much that they join down in the expedition, and unfortunately they're also lost in the situation as well. Now, they actually end up charging $250,000 per person. Yes, it's a very unusual business. This kind of a trip is very much relegated to multi-millionaires, billionaires, who want to see the Titanic so far up close, because again, these are very, very rare things that only the hyper-rich and the, and the elite can absolutely afford. Now, of course, you would imagine for a price tag like that, the security on such a ship would be immense. Ladies and gentlemen, let's dig up even deeper. Now, some people who've been following this have probably heard the fact that the Titan is an only five-person sub in the world that can reach the Titanic depths, 2.4 miles below the sea. And it's also the only one with a toilet. God, I hope that actually exports out into the sea. I really hope people don't have to deal with these septic issues, especially if they're unfortunately in the case of almost dying in this situation. Now yet, I can't help notice how many pieces of the sub seem improvised. That's not something you want to hear. 
with off-the-shelf components. Piloting the craft is run with a video game controller. Yeah, you might have heard that. Oh no, they're using a video game controller to pilot such an elite ship? Actually, I got a video for you too. Right here, we can actually see uh, them showcasing the inside of this Titan submarine. So this is it. Like, it's this is for five people. Obviously, it's got some carbon fiber hidden around in the hull. It's got some windows to look out of. And of course, if we look inside, you've got some computers for understanding these ship systems and also connected to, I assume, cameras outside the ship so you can get a better idea of this Titanic that you're actually going to go see. That... Not even kidding, is the fucking controller used to pilot this submarine. Now, of course, for any astute person, this is a Logitech F710 wireless gamepad. Now, you might be like, why would somebody use a wireless gamepad? Why the fuck would you bring a Bluetooth gamepad to the mix? Uh, especially when, if you're going to be using a game controller in a submarine, it should probably be wired. You might be like, but Muda, why would you even use a game controller in the first place? And ladies and gentlemen, to understand, this is not something that's like super rare. To understand, even people that are in the military tell you that military sources around the world cite the same reason. Younger recruits are infinitely familiar with the user interface and ergonomics of a video game controller. And because Microsoft owns the Xbox brand, Xbox controllers are compatible with a variety of computer operating systems such as Windows. So in a way, a lot of things that are piloted, like drones, UAVs, uh, you know, robots, some of them will have like fully functional controls with Xbox, like, you know, or game controllers. And the reality for that is, again, it's a lot simpler to use. Imagine when you're playing a video game and you're like, damn, I wonder if this is what controlling like an actual like anti-tank robot or anti-diffuse robot is like. That's probably reality in some cases. Using a game controller is not super duper weird. However, the problem with this situation is using a fucking wireless one, it seems. Because ladies and gentlemen, when you're at such depths, radio communications, Bluetooth communications can be finicky. You know what isn't finicky? A wire connected between the controller and the actual system. That will never waver, okay? And if the wire fucks up, then you can just interchange it with another wire. Controller messes up, you can use a different controller. But again, this is just one of the problems that the actual uh, submarine had. From what I understand too, the crew closes the hatch from the outside 17 bolts. So people who are inside the submarine get bolted in, which I don't know if this is necessarily uh, the smart thing to do. From what I understand, water pressure alone should prevent you from even opening a uh, submarine hatch underwater. I don't know why you necessarily need to bolt it in, but then again, this is a pretty massive depth that they're going. So maybe I'm wrong in this case. Any submersible experts can correct me in the comment section below. Now, this isn't the only time they've done this expedition. They've done it a few times, but unfortunately in this case, it seems like for the price tag, like I mentioned earlier, there were no safety redundancies, no form of beacons that would release that would just float all the way to the top to signify to some of the, uh, you know, rescue personnel where the submarine would have been. No forms of die, no nothing. Literally, they sent this submarine down and uh, eventually when it lost contact with the, up, uh, with the uh, surface uh, motherships, that is when like the red alert kicked off and trying to find this thing has become a game of literally finding a needle in the world's largest haystack. The goddamn ocean, okay? Again, it's baffling to me looking at this from like, again, I'm not like a, a you know nautical engineer or anything, but like literally looking at how this was designed, I can't imagine how they were ever given the clearance to even run this business in the first place. Looking into even their blog posts at OceanGate, literally I was looking into how the classification for the ship happened, and this is all the way back in 2019, so things could have obviously changed, but they were talking about how they weren't even classed at a point. So when OceanGate founded, the goal was to pursue the highest reasonable level of innovation in the design and operation of manned submer submersibles. By definition, in innovation is outside of an already accepted system. However, this does not mean that OceanGate doesn't meet standards where they apply, but it does mean that innovation often falls outside of the existing industry paradigm. While classing agencies are willing to pursue the certification of new and innovative designs and ideas, they often have a multi-year approval cycle due to the lack of pre-existing standards. 
You know why that is? Because when you're designing such experimental technology, you need to put it through the ringer quite literally to make sure nothing fucks up. And if things do mess up, you have contingencies on top of contingencies. Because at this point, you're playing with lives, you know? When you're designing vehicles, especially like vehicles that send human beings to space, very dangerous environments, or the bottom of the ocean, the Marianas Trench, which is another very dangerous environment, your materials, your ship, needs to meet standards on top of standards. That's just how it works. Anybody that thinks you don't need to do that or that that's just the government being annoying, you don't understand the amount of safety uh, that's actually being like exhibited when the government pushes for those kind of regulations. What's really like sad about this is when it came to like regulations, uh, it seems like the CEO is pretty dismissive of this shit too. As according to an interview that he actually was part of, listen to this one real quick. OceanGate's Director of Marine Operations, David Lockridge, started working on a report around the time according to court documents, ultimately producing a scathing document in which he said the craft needed more testing and stressed the potential dangers to the passenger of the Titan. Two months later, Ocean Gates faced similarly dire calls from more than three dozen people, industry leaders, deep sea explorers, experts, who warned in a letter to the chief executive, Stockton Rush, that the company's experimental approach and its decision to forego a traditional assessment could lead to potentially catastrophic problems. Yeah, no shit. Mr. Conan said that Mr. Rush called him after reading the letter and told him that industry standards were stifling innovation. Yeah, that's uh, not healthy to think. And now this dumbass is on the same submersible that he's actually put other lives in risk. Truly, truly, truly stupid individuals, man. I tell you what. Now, personally, obviously, I hope the best case scenario and the search and rescue operators behind this absolutely bring these five individuals back safe and sound. But this is a glaring showcase as to what happens when you don't take actual like precautions and you don't take actual basic safety guidelines into actual like you know if you don't actually process them the right way ladies and gentlemen the titan submersible has absolutely been lost uh, searching for the titanic and i hope to god it doesn't share the same fate as the titanic i really hope that the individuals inside there right now which i'll tell you right now given where they are at it's an absolute hellscape scenario that they're in Oxygen is running out, but I really, 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 really am hoping that the Canadian Coast Guard and the American Coast Guard does an absolutely amazing job and recovers five individuals, all healthy and safe, and hopefully none of this shit can ever happen again. Because if those people are brought back safe and sound, the CEO for this company, Rush, has to absolutely uh, answer for some real fucking heavy hands of negligence, is all I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen. Wild, wild stuff. But yeah, I've been following this for the last uh, day, really, and it's been absolutely wild. I mean, I've literally seen a lot of memes floating around about this stuff, but looking into the story, it's truly fascinating. But ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar, and uh, yeah, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. Hopefully, these people are going to be just fine. Hopefully, uh, ho hopefully, the search and rescue operators succeed. This is me, Mudahar, and uh, yeah, I'm out.